Hello everyone. I want to welcome you again with another beautiful interview. This time it is with a fellow coach. Okay, I have Jessie with me and she's a, an intimacy and sexuality coach just like I am, except she is on a different continent and obviously with a different culture in her background with a different life experience with different everything. So with no further ado, welcome Jessie. So happy to have you here with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So um, I wanted to ask Jessie to speak to me about the way her work is. What are their challenges? What are the breakthroughs? What are the beautiful stories in her communities? Just like I'm having them. So this will be an, um, a discussion that we will both have. But first of all, let's hear from Jessie a little bit about who you are. What is your work okay. so far? What brought you to sexuality coaching? Thank you for that question. Thank you so much, Lana, for having me. I'm really, really grateful for this opportunity. And it's good to finally share a space with you. Thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Jessica Samson. You already introduced me. Um, I'm an intimacy coach. Um, my mom, I'm married. Um, and you asked the question, what brought me into um, talking about intimacy? You know I'm from Nigeria, right? Yes. <laughs> Aha, I'm from West Africa, Nigeria. And this conversation is such that we do not actually have. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, my friends, my family, people are thinking I'm going gaga, I'm going local because <laughs> I'm teaching the forbidden topic. In that, and that's, I think that's the, one of the reasons why I had to have this conversation because, I mean, I've been married for eight years and times when I freely just have this conversation with my friends and, you know, family, they'd be like, Jess, please don't say something. Tell me more. Well, let's go into a corner. And I'm like, we should have this conversation. It's, I mean, it's a natural affinity for me to talk about sexuality. And I knew that, I thought it twice that a lot of people need to hear this and starting with us women, who are actually having this uncommon knowledge of to us is seen as a taboo or sin. And that was how I got into it. And every time I think of going back, like shutting my mouth, I hear people say, you've changed my life. My intimacy is top notch. My sexuality, I'm bold, I'm confident. And that's it for me. Mm -hmm. And that was how I started being on this journey. You know. So in your country, and I'm guessing in maybe in the continent altogether, sexuality is also taboo yes what do you know it is in europe it is in the united states <laughs> or in america i think north america south mm -hmm. america i don't know about asia maybe we'll meet people from asia also and we'll hear the same i, I, I think it's it's a world i wouldn't say that it's uh, a pandemic that we can't talk about this because it's like <laughs> it's a global problem you know but i think this is one major force we can you know get to heal you always say something i mean we're friends i follow you on your social platform where you talk about growing sex and truly i'm really adopting that line like we all need to grow in sex okay we need to get comfortable where these conversations are part of the curriculum for, you know, classwork, for school, for any kind of study. I mean, well, you know, and one thing I need to put down before we go into, I'm trying to rush the time, is we need to start taking this as serious as we can. I was talking mm -hmm. about my book, which I released, and for some reasons, I can't do a sponsored advert because this is one topic we can't talk about. But thank God that I haven't been stoned to death. I haven't been arrested. So we're getting to accept <laughs> this conversation. So, yes. I hope you will not get arrested just because you talk about intimacy to couples and help them make their lives more beautiful. I really hope that's I not illegal. Been, I haven't been... I haven't been arrested yet, but I have been arrested verbally where like, oh my God, you're such a terrible person. How could you? Why say this? No, you shouldn't. So I would say I've been arrested, but I keep getting out anyway. <laughs> All right. So we had prepared a few questions okay. that we would um, both basically answer, you know, as peer to peer. And the first okay. one was what brought you to this work? And you've answered beautifully uh, in brief for me. Well, I've shared this story a lot of times in my community, but I don't, I'm not sure everybody heard. Maybe there are new people here. So in my case, it was, um, I was doing environmental activism, planting trees in my country. That's Romania, oh. Southeastern Europe. 
And uh, in my personal life, I was not as happy as I wished I was. And uh, at a certain point from misery to misery to misery, I um, found myself in an abusive interaction. And the term was given by my therapist at the time because I went to a therapist because I just didn't understand what was going on. And um, after that point, I said, okay, I'm going to put pause on relationships and I'm going to grow in a different way. And I first did that Amazing. for two years for myself. And then in 2016, I opened up and I said, okay, I'm going to build a community. So that was oh. briefly. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's amazing. Good one. Thank you. So let's see now about our questions. First of all, how is your work received in your country? Um, in the last um, three years, it's been different. I would say um, 2020 was an eye opener where the world went on lockdown, the, way the world went on shutdown, and people started asking questions. You had no choice than to stay with your loved one, and people wanted to know, people wanted to grow. So I'd say that there's been um, a lot of, I can't give a percentage, but there's been a lot of growth, and I say thanks to the universe, and people are awakening day by day. You know, people are beginning to accept this conversation like i think i need help people just get to you know become sexually active without really knowing what this is about you know they just find themselves there and you know that's it so so far it's been i'm um, amazing and i've been having partnered um conversations around this for married couples you know mostly not for the single ones because single people wouldn't even bring themselves to wanting to ask me about their sexuality so it's basically um for partnered um couples mainly mm -hmm. okay so in my country how i'd answer this is i've noticed that since 2016 especially last year we've had a few changes first of all we've had a law that was passed in parliament um or actually they tried to pass it because it was rejected at a certain point for education around health and also sexuality in schools from first grade to 12th grade, but you know, with different approaches according to your age level. Yes. And I've seen many people who work in advertising for artists, who are therapists, who are also approaching topic of sexuality. Amazing. Yeah, in their work. When I began in 2016, this was not such common knowledge, uh, meaning not commonly shared on social media, people speaking openly about this. It was more in the terms of relationship therapy and that's it, but the topic of, you know, precisely sexuality, no. And um, it's quite an array of people. Now there are podcasts, our country has already two famous podcasts around sexuality. There's a third one coming up. Uh, I was about to set up a podcast until Clubhouse got initiated and I said, hmm, I'm going to check out Clubhouse. Maybe this is much easier. <laughs> yeah. Then, cool. And um, yeah, a lot more people are coming to programs, retreats, women that facilitated for women's communities also approach sexuality and they announced this publicly because they didn't do this in the past. We also have Amazing. men's circles building in our country nowadays. It's still in the inception stage, but it's going to be a thing here in the next years. Mm -hmm. So it's growing. Amazing. Yeah, it's growing. It, it's becoming a field in and of itself. So that's what I'm super happy with. And also for me, I received questions from facilitators in other fields. They wanted to have mm -hmm. mentoring around the topic of sexuality. And I said, okay, that's good. <laughs> they want to understand. Yeah. I think. I think I resonate. Um, in my country, we've had a lot of um, um, spiritual leaders, which we call ministers or pastors, who actually want to learn as well, just to be able to, you know, teach in churches. You know, because I mean, one of one one very important, one very um, significant one. I mean, um, this pastor was telling me that most of the problems he has, you know, for um, couples who come to him are basically on the note of sex, you know, being unsatisfied, you know, couples fighting. And it was necessary for him to actually seek um, certification or know better when it comes to sexuality to be able to teach well. So truly, I, I think I resonate with that. Yeah. For a pastor to say this, wow. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Yeah, no mm-hmm. pastors here asking for this topic yet, but maybe they will. <laughs> okay, truly, maybe with time. Yeah, yeah, we, we gotta have faith. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta have faith in sure. men of God. Okay, what are the people that come to your sessions? Meaning their age or their relationship status? Are they married with kids? Are they just married? About to get married? Okay. Um, most people are married people, married people. Married. Um, that is, that happens because even for married people, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them notions around it. Like you're a bad wife, you're a bad husband, you know, for going all the way to talk about sex. So for singles, they, I mean, I've gotten a few of um, singles who want to have some elevation, what I call mind mapping class, but, you know, uh, there's a bias, like, what would you be doing single? Would you be masturbating? Would you be touching yourself? Or you're engaging in premarital sex that we all frown against, you know, so basically for married couples. And I mean, I'm comfortable with um, that because this is legal. This is this is right for me to really teach couples how to really enjoy sexuality and intimacy. So you still have that. And, uh, and I would, go, sorry. You still have that worry about being legal in a way? Yes, because I somehow I'm affected, you know, I'm not able to express. I'm not able to teach as I'd want to. Um, if you notice, when I make some conversations or some posts on my social media pat- platform, I'm always restricted to using some, you know, we, we know the Instagram um, guidelines and all that. So there's all a lot of restrictions you can be. So I do a lot of private um, classes and coaching where I get to be me in all my elements. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. In my case, it's, uh, first of all, I do target women. Um, I found this a little more, let's say easier to come across to women as to what this work is and not be misunderstood that it's not something else. It's just coaching. And, um, occasionally I will filter out from all the requests I receive from men, one or two, when I feel that they are, you know, really understanding of this the work. Is true. And most of them are in their thirties. Mm, rarely I get women in their 20s, but mostly in their 30s. And um, it's half. Half are in relationships and committed, half are single. And exceptionally, I get married women, somehow they are in a crisis and about to get divorced. And mm, it's not, the problem is not just with their intimacy, it's just one of the topics that, um, or one of the parts of their relationship and their marriage that is highly affected by all the problems that they have, but they usually come when it's already pretty late, sadly. Mm. Mm. However, I haven't seen people in my country getting a divorce just because their sex life is not okay. I've seen them getting divorced from other reasons, but not on sex. Not on uh, what, I, what I think, what I think is sex is really hiding on a platform that might just be like a major reason because I, I mean, we're not, um, I, I experience discreet when talking about sexuality. So I wish I could share um, a very, uh, a story that really touched me. Um, a client who has never experienced an orgasm. And at the moment she, you know, finally found out that she could get to this point of fulfillment. She wanted a divorce, you know, <laughs> so we're going through, <laughs> we're going through another um, therapy to, you know, I mean, you know, but there's been a whole lot of struggles. So I, mostly I always say that sex is sometimes majorly an issue because once you're confident in the bedroom, once you're alive, once you're waking and you know what to do and you're a bit grown or you are waking in that um, aspect, you'll be able to, your relationship would be a bit top notch and, you know, well guided, but that's not also, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Powerful story. I hope that you'll have many more orgasms from now on. <laughs> yes, I hope. Okay, let's see. What else had we set up for ourselves? What are the most frequent topics that we address with those that seek our services? Wow. I would say the first one is um, just please, how can I enjoy sex better? And how can I achieve? I always correct them. It's always, how can I get an orgasm? I'm like, no, how can you, you know, I'm experienced, you know, an orgasm. A, a lot of people, 
I mean, this is mostly the two biggest issues, how to enjoy sex and how to um, get an orgasm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Those are my two biggest, yeah. For me, it's women who are worried that they're not sexual enough. So somehow they feel that they're not showing enough pleasure or desire to their partners. And then, yeah, there's the orgasm issue because they're not experiencing orgasm with their partners. Whether when I get the single women, they're like, okay, in my previous relationships, I had trouble reaching orgasm and I want to work on this since I'm alone now or single. And with the women that are in relationships, well, uh, either they're not showing enough passion or it's like, I'm not having an orgasm with my husband. What's wrong with me? And when men show up, mostly it's because they're not having enough, from their perspective, enough interaction intimately with their partners or with their wives. And usually that's because there's a child that is come in the relationship and the woman is obviously you know a bit overwhelmed with all the stuff Mm. she has to take care of and though they are understanding they're also in a very tough position because they were used to getting something and for a long time now they're not getting it and that's always a that that is one of the most delicate topics to work on for me how do i balance you know how do i help because i'm not the one that balances but how do i help a man who is, um, well, his wife is taking care of the child and he's frustrated a bit and he doesn't want to be so. So yeah, those are, those are the three topics. (laughs) Okay. Let's see what else. Mm. How do we see the role of intimacy in people's overall life and success? Mm. Very important. Um, Do you want me to go first? Yes. Okay. For me, I'm going to... The truth is, I mean, we were, we were trained to, you know, to know this truth that your sexuality or your sex or your sexual energy is like the highest force of, force of your life. It's, you know, so for me, I would say it's like the bedrock of... It's, is, is like the bedrock of a being, you know, you want to perform if you, you know, if you're working in your, you know, if you're working like your key performance indicator, um, being a better person, being um, your productivity level is on top notch. One of the things you want to, you know, check first is your balance with your intimacy. And I always like to use myself as an example. My life is, you know, I wouldn't say 100, but I am more confident. I am, I'm sane. I am, I'm well balanced, you know. Sometimes when my sexuality isn't as, you know, my libido is down, I fall sick. I fall ill. You know, sometimes I'm not, I can't even, you know, activate my, you know, my, my happy moods, you know, properly. So, I mean, I could relate intimacy to a standard of living as it has to be 100. Mm. So to get it, awesome. to get a good life, to get um, to to function better, your intimacy has to function as well. Mm-hmm. It has a lot to do with your your way of life or your well being. And when I teach sexuality, I talk about nutrition. I talk about your diet. I talk about your, I mean, overall well being. Because it has everything to do with linking this and you know keeping you sane. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's a powerful answer, by the way. Super inspirational. <laughs> Thank you. Um, in my case, I have this motto that I put all the work that I do under. When we grow in sex, we grow in personal power. Because that's how wow. I see it, essentially. That's your that's personal huge. power. Yeah. That's, That's in your sexuality, you are naked, not just with, from clothes, but from worries, from masks, from anything. And the more you allow yourself to be. I'm naked, adopting this. I, yeah. I, I love this. <laughs> sorry, sorry to cut you, but this is, this is powerful. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. in order to reach orgasms, like you shared the story about the woman that she finally reached orgasms and then she wants just the, the relationship and, uh, to a different level and everything. That is because you are fully in your power and power. in your vulnerability, in what you are, in letting go, in trusting yourself and your partner 
or hey, your toys or <laughs> whatever you're using. What is that, just to, truly? Yeah. And also sometimes people get, when they are super powerful in themselves and in their sexuality, they are turned on on multiple levels, meaning they are inspired, they are excited about life, they take endeavors. So, you know, you grow in sex, you grow in personal power. In the areas of your life, amazing yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else amazing. have we set up here. Oh, some of the methods that we use to help people and perhaps how those methods reach into other areas of their lives. Okay. Um, I think my two biggest and two will be um, CBT. I'm a CBT um, trainer, cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, yes, and I do a lot of mind mapping because in my country, most of the challenges has to do with it's all mental, right? Every woman is born sensual. Every man is sensual. We are sensual beings. We just need to know what to touch, how to touch, how to heal those traumas, how to you know, heal from the past and knowing better. So my two biggest tools would always, always be CBT, where I teach you from you know, coming, to this, coming from this point to this other point. And it's always, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm learning the uh, jet egg from you, from your, um, the course, which I, so I'm you really want. exploring that. <laughs> most, <laughs> thank you. So I'm also exploring Tantra because Tantra has to do with a lot of um, um, your body connecting with your, you know, with just your entire, you know, force, your being, you know, your smell, the movement and everything. So it's beautiful. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. And I what do is, um, the group train. Okay, sorry. Um, no, go ahead, finish and then I'll ask. Okay, so yeah, and um, it's always on a private one-on-one um, -on -one, or I do sometimes group training. I have a community, um, like a membership where I do um, physical training. I don't engage in um, physical touch or, you know, just, how do I say, just like um, video conferencing or, uh, you know, just this platform. So that's what I, um, yeah. Okay. I was going to ask you, how does Tantra, how does it um, blend in with your culture? Or okay. Your I mean, it, you know, okay. It's, it's something that is not being accepted. And um, personally, I have been exploring like the um, Kijong from China. Is it China? Yeah. Where you, you use your senses to movement, how you touch your head, your chest, your, you know, these are um, practices that they don't have to align to my culture. But once I see that it works, you know, it's amazing. When I saw your profile, I saw Body Walker. We've never heard that before, you know, not until I started following you. You know, these are cultures that we have our own um, culture, like the dancing, you know, we stamp our feet, you know. You know, the African, you know, where we, I love you know, those. chant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where we chant and, you know we do those and in my head I'm thinking they are basically almost the same thing but different culture calling it the same name so we are actually one in essence or in 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 in, in truth you know but different people practice so um I introduce tantra um when my clients want to know more they go for that so I don't project into them mm -hmm. I just suggest you know and like I said I'm not a pro in tantra I'm just using it for my own um, personal consumption and if you truly want um, to really explore with me then I introduce a bit I'm not um, a pro I'm not a professional you know but I intend to go pro because I actually love you know it's almost like a body um, like what you do so <laughs> uh, yeah so you're an explorer you know. basically yeah and you're bridging yes exactly and approach it awesome mm -hmm. I mean, for the first time I watched your class and I think everybody should, you know, subscribe to your um, sex dojo. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it, it's just so funny and interesting knowing that I'm learning new things that has to do, that's like, different from what I trained on. And it's just fascinating. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, being more, not necessarily sure. being professional on all of that, but to know more and grow mm -hmm. more. Yeah, I find that growing as a professional also is extremely important. You can hold space for your community so much better. 
No. Absolutely. So the methods that I use, um, first, first of all, they are somatic. So that means breath, touch, movement, body awareness, and um, essentially like the, the essence of our methods is to follow whatever happens in the body and what changes and how those changes inside our body that we perceive affect the decisions that we take. That would be a really yeah. brief, yeah. And, and when you realize the, the, the things that you do with your body, how you breathe, how you move, how you stay, stand, sit, lie down, um, how connected you are to your body will transform your experience for the good or for the mm -hmm. bad, depending on what you do. That's the, you know, the first awareness is that. And then you start to really embody yourself better. Amazing. You're conscious, okay, if I really want to be more passionate with my lover or with my partner or with my husband, okay, I got to be in my body because how else am I going to enjoy this? The, the pleasure mm. doesn't come from outside, it comes from within. So in order for me mm. to have pleasure, I gotta, yeah, I got to connect to my body. That, that's the exercise that I always, um, you know, um, ask my community to get into where we have like a breathing exercise, a breath, breath walk you know, like two, three minutes before we start out, you know, we have the about five um, types of bread, um, bread walk where you, you know, do the water breathing, the fire, you know, just so much. So, I mean, everything we do is almost aligned, you know, but just in different um, space and amazing one. Yeah. Uh, when I get nervous, most of the time I perform the, could it be the, what do you call the double breathing? Uh, my memory failing me now. <laughs> When I get really uncomfortable Step on the inhale, I, so you inhale twice and then you exhale once, twice at once, and just get comfortable. I did that even before this um, Zoom class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to just yes, to just help me get in my in my form and be better and just stay sane. Yeah, super. Yeah, Tony Robbins does this breath a lot. He has his hour of power in the morning and he does a lot of... Wow. Yeah, and see, he also exhales the words. Yeah, so it's... Um, yeah, breath is important. The quality of your breath is going to determine the quality of a lot, not just your experiences, but the, your health. Um, mm -hmm. Some people get oxygen high, like a client I had, and we did breath work for one session. It was super early in the morning and he went to work like super energized and he said, I got oxygen high. Amazing. I didn't even have to smoke anything. I didn't have to drink anything. <laughs> Just oxygen. I was like, yeah. <laughs> wow. That also helped me um, giving back. I didn't even know that I was actually practicing the bread work because I wasn't that um, knowledgeable, you know, then. But during labor, during delivery, we don't have lots of dwellers here because of our culture, but the breeding work really helped me to be able to, you know, push out the baby. All our bread work was it for me because I labored yeah. for say twelve hours. You know, it was it was something else. But you know, the breeding work was such a powerful uh, moment for me, and that was how I pushed my first child. Wow, that's intuitive. Truly, the body just you, your body, something just kicked in and it's like, I got to do this. <laughs> well, wow. exactly. I wasn't, I didn't even know there was anything like that. You know, that was like eight years ago. Right. You know, on today's study, I'm like, Oh my goodness. So what happened? You know, and now I, it makes sense. Like, Oh my God. You know, I mean, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah. Really. Awesome. I'll keep that in mind. I'll give you as an example. Whenever somebody asks me, why do I do breath work? Okay. For your breath, for your birth. <laughs> yes. Yes. It helps, yeah. you know, read about it, check it out. It really, really helps. Yeah. So those are the questions that I mainly had in mind. Um, what I want to do is also, first of all, like challenge ourselves to think about at least three things that we consider important around sexuality. It can be for our work or it can be for ourselves. Three things that are important for our sexuality or oh, those. Okay. Um, well, what would I say? There is, there is a lot of them, but I'll, I'll say that it has to be um, more of consciousness to know that this, is, this has to be a way of life. And that's how I've been living the last uh, um, 
let me say two years, I've been living using my sexuality to recognize that it's actually a way of life, it's a pattern. I am sad and thinking my sexuality, I'm happy, I need to go perform, I need to go do my job, I need to pr produce well or be a better person, I think of my sexuality. So sexuality has to go along with, in, as in accepting or having acceptance is a way of life. So acceptance, mm -hmm. it's a way of life and uh, what would be the third word? Um, what could that be? It's just paramount that there has to be some um, sexuality coaching. We were taught how to bait. We were taught how to get a degree for all that we know. To have this makeup, I had to learn on YouTube. To get certified as a, a diplomat, I had to get a certificate. I feel that every being should go through a sexual coaching class. As like you always say, growing sex to be able to develop in all areas of your life mm -hmm. and your sex is your power so everybody should have a course or two on sexuality so mm -hmm. acceptance way of life and um get a sex coaching done for yourself <laughs> not because <laughs> for yourself right i mean absolutely even us yeah. we should get our coaches for that <laughs> oh yes i i love mama gina regina i love um lila martins and i love you so much like i've been following you for a while now so i learn a lot from you every day and Thank yes you. so yeah. yes and i'm looking at getting more certifications for me because i want to learn more about um semantics and the body um, work so that I could bring to my community and teach them well because these are you know we don't know these things here and when I start talking people be like Jessica are you from this country are you from this continent at all I'm like you just have to yes. know this so <laughs> promise me a certification when you teach me how to do all of the body work while I teach you my African movement and we go all the way <laughs> yes and CBT also cognitive behavioral therapy also sounds very good something that I didn't learn I focused on the somatic not the um, cognitive aspects so okay. definitely okay amazing so three, three things from me I also have to think right now because I put this challenge you know on the spur of the moment oh great okay yeah um so the first one is um confidence like go on this path whoever you are coach not coach in your intimate relationship somebody who's in your 40s in your 50s in your 60s confidence around your sexuality no matter what you do your sexuality is going to be part of your life and extremely important so i say mm -hmm. that that's one important aspect and if you're not confident right now that's probably because you never thought about it before because there it's part of you you can't be not confident about something that is part of you it's just that you maybe you didn't think about it enough or maybe you didn't spend enough time feeling into yourself so that's just lack of exercise there the second one is um well uh how do i say this either enthusiasm or joy i'm not sure which one is better to describe but the idea is that a lot of women that I've seen in my country, they've somehow given up. So a lot of women my age or even younger are saying, you know what, I know I have a problem with, I know I have a lot of blockages, but I don't want to work on that right now. And I've heard this wow. not once, I've heard this more times. And one place where I've heard this was for one of my online classes, that's the um, feminine massage, I had to make a um, vagina like a doll. <laughs> so wow. I went to a seamstress and she had an entire team of seamstresses where they tried to make the model based on the image that I showed them. Uh, you can buy this stuff elsewhere, but in our country, you can't buy it for now. It was So I just went to the seamstresses and I said, you know, if the women that work here for you, because there were women in their 40s, 43, 44, something like that. And I told the woman that was employing everyone, I said, you know, I can do a workshop where I can talk about women's sexuality, women's anatomy, important things that maybe they should know, you know, communicating around mm -hmm. that. And she said, actually, that sounds great. Let me go back to the, all the women in my team and I'll come and tell oh. you exactly when. And after a week, she came back, she said, you know, that's not going to happen. And I said, wow, why? She said, well, 
these women said that, wow, we're over 40. What, what good is sex for us right now? We're done with it. I said, excuse me. I was like, wow, that is, I didn't push. For. Yeah. I didn't push anybody, but I was like, how can you like, you're in your forties. You're not dead yet. <laughs> you're, you're active. You're sexually active in your eighties. Yeah. And I was like, wow, the mentality there. And there was no joy, no enthusiasm. They had given up. So I feel that it's important to have joy and have enthusiasm around your sexuality, no matter what age you are. Not a lot. Yeah. And the third one, um, exploration. Like what you're doing, learning from all corners of the world and getting inspired by so many people. Even if you're not, like you said, I, I don't want to be a pro in everything, but I want to learn. And I want to explore, essentially. That's what exploration is for me. You want to go outside of what you know and just, you know, see what's out there, what is possible for you. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy it, if you don't, but you're exploring. And I feel that's, that's the part that will keep you alive. That's how I see a sexually alive person and sexually flowing person. They're mm -hmm. exploring. Even if it's just in their mind and they're curious about stuff and they want to learn, but they're exploring. They're exploring. That's amazing. Yeah. Good one. Good one. <laughs> Good yeah. one. Yeah. So, um, guys, I'm going to put a link under this video where you can find Jessie and her work. It's going to be a link to her Instagram. It's going to be a link to her website. You have a book, right? Tell us a little bit about yes, your book. Yes, I do. Um, okay, the title of my book is Woman, Sex Was Made for You Too. I love the title so much. Like, when I say this, I feel like I'm talking to every African woman because sex is something we don't talk about sex is usually that thing you want to give to a man it's not something we enjoy you know it's it's a notion you know like a task like an obligation that you you know you 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 provide for you know the man which is seen as head of the family so mm -hmm. i have a simple message to women sex was also made for you too as well it's not just for the you know and i'm not trying to you know be all the feminist that you know fights the uh, uh male counterpart not at all i'm just teaching women how to have a mindset shift i talked about the old dogmas of um religion and culture you know basically just you know enjoy sex especially married women because in my place single women are beginning to enjoy sex more than the married women because sometimes you just you know get married and one two years you're tired of sex you're like the kids i have to do this i have to do that and the last thing on your mind is sex so yeah. i have to create a lot where you can have fun and just enjoy sex so yeah so check the book out and um if anybody has any questions let them like put them under this video and i'll get back to jesse and if you have stuff that you want to know, maybe we'll have another interview, like a second round. <laughs> and Great. And q and I'll be waiting. <laughs> I'll right. be waiting. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here and for sharing all this beautiful work with your country. And not just because with the online, we can share everywhere. And thank you for being such a beautiful inspiration because you inspire me thank too. You. And I think you, we inspire all other people that maybe want to walk in our shoes or just work with us. So, yeah. Thank yes. you so much. So keep in touch and um, yeah, maybe we'll see each other for the second round. Who knows? Very soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.